Here in my garage, just got this new turtle here. That's an old meme. Hey, turtle nerds, welcome back to another video. Now in today's video, we're gonna do a checkup on Pancake. We're gonna check on everybody outside, maybe feed some baby spotted turtles. Oh, and we're gonna take a look at a plant that I think that people should probably avoid putting in their enclosures and their ecosystems. A majority of you guys who are watching are not subscribed. Why? Just hit the little red button, please. It really helps to support the channel. And if you wanna go a step further to help me out and help support everything that I'm trying to build, hit the link right up over here. Head over to my Patreon where you can find access to videos a day early, turtles that I have available when they are, giveaways, all kinds of fun stuff like that. So consider clicking the link over there. I also have merch. Links are gonna be everywhere for all that fun stuff. Anyway, let's get into today's video. So I just got back from Crocfest Adventures yesterday and I wanted to check on Pancake today, this morning, and I thought that he prolapsed again, but this is actually good news. So I threw some food pellets in here to see if he would eat. Of course he did not. Um, and you see that there's garbage and stuff coming from his tail, which I was very worried about until I realized that I picked him up and let's take a look. And it's all of the dead skin the dead skin and scab and scar tissue from the prolapse has come out. That's exactly what I wanted to happen. Absolutely perfect. So this is really, really, really good news. Oh, <laughs> there it goes. All right, buddy, you're pretty much healed up then. That's That should be like it. I'm gonna change this water out because he didn't eat those food pellets. I'm gonna take this out. Wow. This is all scar tissue from his cloaca, which is really nasty now that I'm saying it and now that I'm holding it. Fantastic, that's really good news. That's exactly what I wanted to happen. Literally exactly, I, I'm very happy right now. Hi buddy, you're gonna be fine. I could tell that he didn't, there was a risk that he would have necrosis by keeping this in his body and, and it would decay. But the fact that he got it out and I could tell by his attitude as soon as I got home, it was way, way, way back to normal. Our pancake is gonna be just fine. Actually, you know what? Let's, where are my worms? Hey there. We're gonna be lazy today, and um, I don't want to thaw shrimp. I don't think I even have any more, so we're gonna see if he'll eat blood worms. So really picky hatchlings eat blood worms, and I want to see if he will eat some too. Hi, buddy. Hold on, just one minute. Here you go, fella. No, no, no. Look, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. So I'm gonna leave him alone and see if he'll eat that. I'm thinking odds are he's not even gonna touch it. Yeah, he's probably not even gonna touch it and just leave it and then I'll have to come out and rinse out the entire tub and whatnot. But I'm gonna go inside first and go feed the baby spotted turtle some bloodworm cubes as well. Two cubes for the baby turts. So as I mentioned before, I'm a little run down. I really don't wanna go through the entire process of feeding these guys. So we're just gonna not feed them today. They'll be totally fine. One of our spotted turtles is sitting right here. Let's toss him a cube. And then we need one for the other one, for little Butter, who usually hangs in the back, so we'll throw one back there. And I need to top off this enclosure as well. You can see all the guppies and the fish are fairly happy. Now that it is feeding time there, now he sees it. Come on, buddy, go ahead. Here he goes. Come on, bud, go. You're the predator. Don't be afraid of the fish. You are the one that should be eating them. They should be afraid of you. Ah, there he goes. Nice linguine. Nice spaghetti. So see how he can take these little individual bloodworms and eat them. So he'll probably find all these on the floor later and just be hunting them and whatnot and foraging for food as if he would naturally in the wild. I have nothing for you, Butternut. You just ate the other day. I gave you three massive night crawlers. There's no food for you, buddy. I'm sorry. I know, I know. Look at that face. I'm sorry. Mr. Cake. Have you eaten yet? Uh, it doesn't look like he has touched his cube yet. He's showing more interest in getting the heck out of this enclosure rather than eating, which I guess is still a good sign because I'm trying to think if, if pre-drowning, pre-prolapse, I were to put him in this tub, he would probably just be worried about getting out and would probably ignore the food for the most part. I'm not really sure when it would be a good idea to get him in the pond or if I should try to get some shrimp, make sure that he's eating first and everything's okay. I'll probably give him a temporary outdoor setup on my patio and keep trying to feed him there and then probably after that get him on a test swim in the pond. All right buddy so let me just pick him up here take a look at how he's doing he's still got some injuries some sores I'll plop him in this just for a minute and he's gonna be pissed just stay there buddy and now I'm gonna change out this water. Nice fresh water for him.
Now we take young Mr. Cake. Sorry, buddy, sorry, buddy, sorry, sorry. Look at that strength. I mean, he is, yeah, he's doing way better. Uh, I think it might be a while for him to eat. I'm gonna talk to some of my friends and see if maybe soon it's time to get him back outside. Now, as we come outside and my lame as heck transition lenses transition, let's take a look at a little something. Over the winter, I took a small plant from a friend, about yay big, yay big, literally just like this and put it in the bog and it has become a massive, insane, overgrown bush. To the point where it became a problem when it began spreading over here and spreading that way. It was fine when it came straight up, but I do not want it spreading to other areas of the bog because I know that it's invasive. Well, not technically, but this is spearmint. And this is a whole bunch that I pulled out and I wanna let bake and dry and die before I throw it in the woods so that way it doesn't, you know, have any possibility of taking over, you know, in the South Carolina. It could grow and then take over the entire freaking forest. I'm just, this is just kind of a, you know, guys, you have to do a lot of research and be very careful with what plants you put in your ecosystem. I knew that this plant would probably go crazy. I didn't know that these tulips would go nuts. The old filter that I had here actually cracked because because the roots were just taking over and constricting and moving the flow from this tulip. So this is just, consider this, this, all of this your PSA. Be careful with what you're planting because this mint has just gone absolutely bananas and be careful with how you dispose of it. You know, all it takes is this to be exposed to some dirt and the roots will start growing and then you'll have a whole plant out here somewhere else that you do not want it. I am mighty tired. I don't feel great. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you learned something and I'll see y'all in the next one.